Welcome to the Blue Collar Success Podcast, the top podcast dedicated to local business and industry. I'm your host, Jacob Lewis. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Links are in the description below. So today I have John Luttrell. He is the owner and operator of Dead Bud Walking. Today's episode is going to be about pest control, what to look for, and what to not look for. So before we get started into your specific business or the, the industry as a whole, I want to talk about your specific business and how you got into it. So John, go ahead. Well, um, back in 1996, I was spraying lawns and I had a friend of mine go to a pest control company. He said he really liked it. And I went and applied and got the job. And the owner said, why would you want a job in this field? And I said, because I'm the UPS man. And he said, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, I feel like I'm bringing you a present. The UPS man doesn't bring you bills. He doesn't bring you the tax return. He brings you gifts, mm -hmm. presents. So I feel like when I come that you're happy to see me. Whether you've got a problem or not, you're happy to see me. So I kind of look at it that way. Cool. And you've been doing this for 23 years. 23 years. Well, 19 in pest control and four in lawn service, but yes, okay. 23 altogether. Okay. Awesome. And so what... what um made you start your own business? Well, we, uh, we, we felt like what was missing in the, in the bigger companies mm -hmm. was, the, was the direct customer service aspect, mm -hmm. where it became more about revenue dollars and production mm -hmm. than it became about customer service. Right. And at the end of the day, customer service is everything. If, if the, you depend on your customers for your revenue, but if you don't treat them right, you're gonna lose them. Mm -hmm. And, I th and we felt like it, the, the bigger the company gets, the more they kind of trip over their own feet because they, um, they, there's all about, more about revenue and making money than it is about the customer's experience. Sure. The customer experience is everything um, in any business, in any service industry, business which everybody is in, mm -hmm. service, one way or another. If the customer's not having a good experience, they're not gonna they're not gonna patronize you. That's all there is to that. Right. And there's too much competition here. That, so how uh, how saturated or is the market saturated for pest control? At least in the Tampa Bay area. In Tampa Bay, there's several hundred companies. Oh, um, in okay. the in the state, there's thirty eight thousand companies. Jeez, I didn't realize it was that it, that competitive. That's a lot here. We're in a tropical climate most of the time. Right. Um, bugs are a reality here. Yep. Um, one way or another, and um, with all the with all the companies out there, and there are a lot of companies mm -hmm. that are some of the biggest in the world here. Mm -hmm. um, small businesses really a, a, a drop in a bucket in comparison to the big companies, right? Um, where their thing is all about production numbers and numbers volume the, the volume and yeah. the the smaller company has to rely on their service mm -hmm. and their experiences because i can't compete with them i can't compete on a billion dollar level i um, never will be able to mm -hmm. um, and i'm okay with that i would rather give the customer a better experience right and have them trust me and we, we we're partners in this i can't do it without you and you can't do it without me so let's work together and I think that's important in the industry today. I think that's important in every business industry now, especially because of social media. In social media, you know, your your one bad experience who goes and tells their neighbor, like you know, 30, 40 years ago, it's that the that one person goes and tells their neighbor and maybe one other person, and that's it. Now that one person may have 5,000 friends on Facebook, another 10,000 Instagram followers, and they blast the name with a bad experience. And that, that's, why I, that's why I think, from what I've been reading and, and listening to, that the, the smaller companies that focus on customer service over everything else, they're starting to get pumped up. Well, I think, I think you can see that anywhere. When you have a good experience somewhere, you tell everybody you know. Yep. Or you tell you tell a very few you tell a couple of people that you may run into. If you have a bad experience, you're screaming at the top of your lungs to everybody. It's everywhere. Yep. You know, if you go to if you go to a restaurant and you order a cheeseburger and it comes out not cooked right, mm -hmm. 
but they make it right, you're okay. You're like, okay, well, they may have had a bad day. It's, I understand. If you go in a place and you have lousy service, you never want to go back. Right. And it's not the same. It, you, people make mistakes, but that's rude is not an excuse. Exactly. Okay, so, you know, we can understand human error. Okay, the, they were in a rush, the burger was a cook, they were, I'm okay with that. But, because they make it right. But if you, have a, if you have a server that's being rude to you, it doesn't matter how good the food is now. Right. You don't want to go back. And that's the, uh, that's the deal. It, yeah. That, that to me is, the, is service. I agree. I agree 100%. So, uh, going back into the industry as a whole. So, tell me about the different certifications that you, the, like the certifications you need just to be a pest control service versus what sets you over the top versus I don't want to deal with this particular company if they're not certified in X. Okay. Well, to, to, be, to have a pest control company in Florida, you're required to have a certified operator, which is a, a state certified operator in charge. Okay. Um, you could have, your employees do not have to be certified, but you have to have a certified person somewhere in the building, okay. in the company. It's almost like a, a, an agent working under a broker. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, to get that certification, um, you have to have three years in the field mm -hmm. or have a, I think it's a master's degree in entomology. Um, and you have to take a state test. Mm -hmm. um, the state test is not easy. It's very hard. Um, but you pass the test and you become a certified operator. Okay. Um, and then you get a plaque that says so. So then when you open a business, that has to be the, for, that has to be the first thing you do because you can't open the business in this state without it. Okay. So I can work for a company without being certified, but I can't, but somebody in that company is certified because they work under his license, mm -hmm. okay? The certified operator is the one that's in charge of the pest control operations. He's in control of what chemicals are used, make sure everybody's following the rules, make sure everybody's doing the right things. And now, is there a lot of companies that try to operate without a license? Well, you can't. In your experience? You can't. You can't in this state. You, okay. You, um, to get the business license, you have to have that person in charge. Okay. And to, to buy the chemicals that you need and Correct. things like that? Okay. You, can, you can't. I can't even purchase the stuff I purchase mm -hmm. through my supplier without the certification. Gotcha. So, um, yes, I could buy stuff from the hardware store or Walmart or whatever, but I couldn't buy the chemical, the strength I get it at. Mm -hmm without the certification. Okay. Um, alongside of that, um, there's, once you get the certification, you're required to do continuing education every year. So uh, if, you, if you have, well, well, there's four total licenses possible. Okay, you, you have, have three of them, right? I have three of them. Okay. Um, there's, there's lawn and ornamental, which is the, the, guess, the grass and the bushes. Mm -hmm. um, that's a license in itself. And then there's general household pest, and rodent, which is normal like bugs, insects, roaches, ants, silverfish, ticks, fleas, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And rodents is one license. Termites is termite and wood destroying organisms is one license. Mm -hmm. And fumigation is a license by itself. I have three of those four. I don't have lawn and ornamental because I don't do lawn work anymore. Well, okay. 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 So what that means is that if it, a customer would call me and say, I've got lawn destroying insects, I can't legally spray that. Gotcha. I can I can treat the lawn for ants or some kind of other pest, but I can't treat for a lawn destroying insect okay. like chinch bugs, mole crickets, things like that. I can't treat for. So okay. Against the, against, the, against the law. So it's not what it's not what it's doing to the lawn. It's what is doing it. Correct. Okay. I, I can spray. I can't spray for fung, fungi in the lawn. I can I can treat ants in the lawn. Mm -hmm. I can spray for fleas in the lawn because mm -hmm. that's fine because I'm doing a household pest. Right. But when it comes to lawn diseases, like fungi and, and chinch bugs and mole crickets and things that destroy the lawn, mm -hmm. I can't do that. Okay. Um, and a lot of people will say, well, can you just do this for me because I don't want to hire a lawn service? No, that's against the law. Okay. Um, so conversely, a lawn company can't do pest control without the pest control license. So that's why they're all broken up the way they are. Mm -hmm. Um, so each, each discipline requires a license, a separate test mm -hmm. and a separate exam is required. Now, so uh, you were telling me that you have those three, uh, but you operate based off of one or two. I operate, I have, I have fumigation, okay. termite and wood destroying organisms and general household pests. 
All right, operated general household pest, but that is more my expertise. Okay. Um, I have knowledge of termites. Um, I know what they look like, I know the damage they do, but I myself do not do termite work. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of logistics in that, that it's, it's just not, I'm not cut out for it. Right, right. But you, hiring you versus hiring somebody who just has the one certification, you're gonna be more knowledgeable and at least have a good recommendation or a good arrow to point that person Correct. into. I partner with a company that does that kind of stuff. Okay. So that um, when I call him up, he can go right to you and cool. we can, you, they can work it out that way. Perfect. Um, it just works out better for me because I, I know this is, I'm more comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. I've done termite work before mm -hmm. for, with other companies, but this is what I feel most comfortable doing. Sure. And that's where I kind of focus my energy. Cool, cool. Uh, so what, as a consumer, as the consumers out there, what should I look for when I'm shopping around for pest control? Well, and what, and what should I be wary of? Well, I think, I think, well, to me, what I would look for in a company that I'm going to thinking about hiring is, am I feeling pressured into a sale? Am I feeling pressured? Because, you know, in the in the sales industry, um, anybody that's ever been in sales knows this that the pressure is to sell, mm -hmm. okay? And a lot of times what you'll get is you'll get somebody that will create a problem to make the sale, mm -hmm. okay? Give me an example. Okay, um, if, you, if you take your car to a car dealership or car lot and you say, or a car mechanic and you say, my car's not running well. And he's gonna give you like six different things Correct. and only one of them may be the problem. But give me an example from your industry. Okay, you could say, you, you could call up, you could call me up and say, I've got, um, I've got a bug problem, I don't know what it is. I've got something, I see a bugs, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, the first step is to figure out what kind of bug you have, okay? You are receiving ants, you're receiving brooches, what are we seeing? And, but you don't know, right. okay? The, the, the consumer today looks online first before they even call, because now we're savvy. Now right. we go to Google and say, what is this thing I'm seeing? Right. Then they already know what they see by the time they call you, okay? I think, to me, what I would look for is somebody that shows up on time, somebody that's honest mm -hmm. and isn't pushy, um, and somebody that's down to earth with you. Okay. Because I don't want bugs in my house. I know you don't want bugs in yours, mm -hmm. okay? But I also understand that the desire not to want to pay for service. So in, in that example, as it relates to your industry, let's say that I see a bug, I, I don't know what it is, I look on Google, I have an idea, but I still call around for a bug guy. The bug guy that I don't want is the guy who comes in and says, well, you actually have three bugs and all three bugs are causing the problem when I only may need treatment for one. I, I, think, you, I think you need to have somebody that breaks it down to you just honestly and just tells you the truth. Right. Because you can make things sound a lot worse than they really are, mm -hmm. and, but that's, that's not ethical to me. Right. I would rather tell you the truth. Okay, if, if, if you don't need me, you don't need me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't wanna make you need me for the revenue. Right. Okay. So, and I'm sure you get a whole bunch of northerners that see like two roaches and call it an investigation. I, I, I've had people call me from, you know, they're from Canada and they see one roach and oh my God, the world's stopping. Yeah, yeah. And we know here it's a reality. Right. You're going to see a roach eventually in your house. Exactly. Um, for those of you not in Florida, for those of you listening outside of a tropical state, uh, yeah, a, a roach a month is pretty normal in Florida. We, they're, they're everywhere. Yeah. And, with our climate and our wind, wind, our rain like it is, bugs are a reality here. Yep. Um, the best we can hope to do is to control them. Mm -hmm. We can't stop them completely, but right. we, can slow, we can control them. That's the goal. Sure. Cool. Well, um, what are some examples of like average pests versus extreme pests? Pests that I can take care of with you know some raid versus something that I see and I tell you about it and you say you need a pest control service yesterday. Well, I, I think you, I think that comes down to how the customer feels. Okay. Because uh, some people, without sounding bad or anything, some people grew up with bugs in their house. Mm -hmm. And to them, bugs in their houses are normal. To most people, they're like, oh my God, I've got bugs in my house, I don't want them, okay? So it's really your tolerance level first. And then once you get inside and you start figuring out what the problem is, for me an extreme pest, 
A, a minor pest would be roaches and ants because I see them every day. Mm -hmm. um, they're treatable if you know what you're doing. Um, I would, I would claim, label a bed bugs as an extreme pest and possibly rodents because of the damage they can do. Mm -hmm. um, but there's not much we haven't seen. Uh, we've seen quite a, quite a few things. So, um, but I would, I would say the ants and roaches are relatively easy to control okay. if you know what you're doing. What about but, German cockroaches? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a different idea altogether. Now, roaches are a broad class of roaches, right. but there's 20-some varieties. Um, German roaches are one of the very few that you don't find outside. They, are, they want to be in the house. They want to inhabit the inside. Mm -hmm. The big roaches you see, the American, the pul we call them palmetto bugs palmetto here. Bugs, yep. They live outside and are happy outside. They, they get in because they have the opportunity to, or the door's open, they slide under a door, but they're not happy inside, it's too cool in here for them. Mm -hmm. They'll stay if there's a food source, if you're dirty, they'll stay. But German roaches want to be here. Mm -hmm. um, and once you get them, it takes somebody who knows what they're doing to get rid of them. Okay. Because the example you used about raid is the bad, absolutely the worst thing you can do. And I know, it, I know it's counteractive to logic. You say, well, I'm going to spray this bug spray because it has miracle things on TV. And it, it just will make your problem exponentially worse. Okay. Um, especially with ants. Um, ants, oh my God, makes it so much worse. Um, it'll, you'll, start, you'll kill some initially, mm -hmm. but the nest doesn't go away. That you just poisoned the area they were in. I can, I can elaborate a lot on that if you want me to. But, um, and roaches are the same thing. If you spray them and they, and they, are, they live through it, now they're immune to it. Now you got a house full of bugs that are immune to what you're using. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not a good day. No, no. Um, so I would say bed bugs probably the most the most uh, intense pest mm -hmm. because of the, of the treatment levels you have to go through, mm -hmm. and it's very labor intensive. Um, and rodents because of the of the sheer danger of eating wires and causing fires and diseases and whatnot. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So what's the and, and that's it's a perfect segue into the next thing I want to talk about. So walk me through the differences of what I can just go out and buy at the store, what you do, and then also those businesses that you see around your DIY pest control, your do-it-yourself pest control services. Well, I think I think in the modern day, I think the, the, the tendency is to try to push people to do their own stuff because um, we all want to do that. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to fix our car. We want to be able to paint our own house. And that's not impossible to do. Um, but... If you're not if you're not educated with the label of the of the chemical you're using, the, the consequences can be disastrous. Not so, even from from a sickness standpoint, it, it can be from you could poison your dog. You could there could be adverse effects mm -hmm. if incorrectly used. And I've seen it done so many times that people think they know what they're doing because they read a few minute few lines of a label, mm -hmm. and they said, "Oh, I can just this the, the dosage I need. I'm good," or they'll say. So well, the, the DIY pest services, they don't really go into, or a lot of the businesses that you've seen, they don't really go into detail about how to spray or what to use and what amounts. From, from, you just basically buy a kit? You can, you can buy a lot of the chemicals that we buy. Okay. You do it yourself. Um, but they'll say, this is what you use for roaches or this is what you use for fleas. They give you no clue how to use it correctly. You have to read it for yourself because it's about money. All they want to do is get your money from you. Well, that's fine, but you know, a lot of a common mistake that I see happening, and I've seen this a lot. People will buy a bottle of spray, over they see at the store, Home Depot, or wherever, and they say, and the guy there says this works for fleas or this works for roaches or ants or whatever, mm -hmm. and they'll read the thing and it'll say one ounce per gallon of water, is is good, okay? Which so, seems pretty diluted. It seems pretty diluted, okay? And then they'll turn around and they'll say, well, if one ounce kills them, five ounces will kill them faster. I have okay. used that same logic okay. on weed killer. <laughs> and, and, you know, the thing is, it, the, the chemical was designed to work the dilution rate that it's at. Mm -hmm. kill, five times the rate's not going to kill them any faster. It, you're only going to kill the bug once. So, But they're more dead. Uh, well, no, it's actually not. What, what happens is that not only now you're putting yourself in danger mm -hmm. from exposure, your pets, possibly your children, the, the environment, whatever. So I think it's important to understand that, that your pest control company, the operator in your company, is responsible for these things. So he understands, he's read the label, he understands the dosage, 
and what it works and what it doesn't, how it's applied appropriately. In your house as an owner, you can spray anything you want. Mm -hmm. You can spray your countertops with poison if you want to. I can't, but you can, okay? <laughs> so the thing is, is that if incorrectly done, mm -hmm. can be dangerous for you. Sure. Okay? And a lot of times people will say, well, I'm seeing ants on my countertops, so I'm going to use this spray from... From the from the from the bug guy stuff from the bug guy store, and I'm going to spray my countertops to get rid of these bugs. Well, you don't know the lasting effects of that. You don't know if there's residual. You don't know. And the thing is, if, if you end up poisoning yourself, who are you going to blame? Okay, you, you're, you're when you hire a company, you're relying on them to know what to do correctly mm -hmm. and what's not allowed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I don't know how many times people have said this to me. Can you spray here? No, I can't spray here. I can't put this here because that's against the law. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can spray behind your refrigerator, but I can't spray your countertop. Right. Okay. So Which they, I mean, that's that's you're you're spraying the area they're in, not the area they're coming from. Right. You you. you it takes a little bit of understanding. You have to read the label. Mm -hmm. Okay. To violate what the label says is federal law. It's federal law now. Okay. So even you, even as a private, like if I go to one of these DIY places, I buy it. I'm applying it in my home, but if I don't apply it correctly, and for whatever reason somebody finds out that's still a federal offense. You would, you, they would have a hard time proving that for you. Sure, okay? sure. In a company level, if I was to do that and you got sick, and I was investigating, they said, well, you sprayed the countertop with this poison. Yeah. I could lose my license um, because I violated the label rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, in this industry, the label's the law. If the label says it, it's law. That's all there is to it. Um, so if it says you can't do it, you can't do it. So segueing into from the chemicals, um, dead bug walking, John at dead bug walking, they use, uh, is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, they use nothing but plant-based uh, chemicals for their pest control. Not exactly. Okay. We, we, use, we use where we can, green chemicals. Okay. Um, in fact, um, pyrethrins um, are a strong repellent for bugs. Um, and that's made from chrysanthemum flowers. Okay. Chrysanthemum, chrysanthemums are toxic um, in the in real world. Mm -hmm. um, insects don't eat them is what I mean, they're toxic. They're not toxic to us, but they're toxic to insects. Okay. So that's a, that's a plant-based derivative. But what we found is um, plant-based derivatives are good in some cases, but they don't have the lasting residual effects you need for long-term care. Okay. Um, if you go green, you're going to have to spray more often. Okay. Okay. But you're going to expose yourself to more things. So you're going to pay more for, for monthly service for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the, what we try to do is kind of do best of both worlds. If we want to go as least toxic as possible for, for our benefit and for yours, to not expose your children and pets, families to yeah. dangerous things. At the same time, not apply more pesticide than we need to to the environment mm -hmm. or for ourselves exposure. Okay. Sure. Um, however, there are chemicals that work better that aren't green. Okay, I would like nothing better than to spray out green chemicals. Okay, for the environment and for everybody's safety. Used correctly, chemicals can be okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, used incorrectly is when they're dangerous. Gotcha. Okay? As, as I mean, just like we were talking about with the DIY stuff. That, that's why it's important you read the labels. Okay. You have to understand how things work together. Some things are some things are neural disruptors. Like there are just there's so many ways that things die, and you have to understand. Do I need gloves on to do this? Do I need long sleeves? Do I need, what do I need to have on? Mm -hmm. Or do I need a respirator? Do I need, what do I need? And the average person's not gonna know that. So if you, if you wanna spray your house for fleas and you wanna do it as a private person, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If I come in and spray for fleas, I'm gonna have a respirator on. Because that's what the law says I have to do. You can do what you want in your own house. Yeah. The only thing you can't do in your own house is fumigate. Right, right. You can treat your own house for termites. Legally, but you can't fumigate your house legally. For, for you can't it, you can't do that as a homeowner. All right. And, I mean that makes sense. I mean somebody can sneak in and, or sneak in. Some kid can get in, right? Fumigation is a very scary business. Yeah. And it can be. Yeah. You know, with poison gas you can't smell or see. Yeah. So. It, and I didn't know that. Uh, the the so we had our house fumigated, and they were explaining how the chemical works. Sorry to get sidetracked off, John, but. Uh, the way the chemical works is, uh, it, John's absolutely right, and I can attest from firsthand experience, the chemical that actually kills the, in this case, termites, was, it's odorless. 
The only way to know is they spray a separate chemical, they pump a separate chemical that actually gives you a little bit of tingling in your nose and that's how you know when the gas is gone. So that was pretty interesting that I thought. But They mix so, it with chlorpicrin, which is tear gas. Oh, okay. So, well, so it's so powerful you can't miss it. It's kind of like natural gas. Mm -hmm. Natural gas has no odor of its own. So they mix it with a smell that you smell, that sweet smell, with, so you know gas is leaking. That's the only way you would ever know. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know that. And with the Vicane, with the, with the fumigant, they mix it with chlorpicrin, which is tear gas, basically, so that it just takes your breath away. There's no way you could survive it. You know the way you'd want to be in that room with it. You, right. We know that in right. gas chamber. But, um, yeah. you know. We, yeah. Former well, Marine, by the way, Semper Fi. <laughs> so you know, you know very well how that smells. But yep. um, that's why they mix it with that. One, is as a warning agent. Mm -hmm. And two, is because that way you know something's here that shouldn't be. Now, how long should your plant-based and non-plant-based plant -based, uh, treatments last for your normal, your normal sprays, your normal pests? What should consumers look for so that they know that they're not getting overcharged for too many spraying, but then somebody's not spraying enough? Well, I, in most cases, I think quarterly service is pretty, pretty standard. Okay. Um, you know, with normal, with our weather here, um, we have a lot of bright sunlight. Uh, we have a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. So um, you want a chemical that leaves residual behind um, outside because you want something that doesn't break down automatically when mm -hmm. it rains. Um, and our chemicals tend to last 75 to 90 days. Um, that's what we want because the sun's going to break them down into smaller elements. Mm -hmm. Water's going to dilute them over time. But if you spray them in the dry, when it's dry outside, the chemicals bond with with the surfaces they they touch, so they 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 have like a it's kind of like having a shield around your house, okay? Sure. So when you spray the outside, you spray the especially spray the entryways heavy, so that there's a chemical bond between the outside and the inside. Mm -hmm. Over over the next ninety days or so, with the sun hitting it and rain hitting it, it's gonna dis, it's gonna dissipate some. And about the time I'm due to come out again is about the time people say, oh, I'm starting to see a bug. I saw a couple of ants <laughs> in, the, in the doorway or something. So that's about the right indication. Now, okay. some people, I have some customers that want monthly service. Then they're residential monthly service. I'm fine with that. That's up to them. Yeah. Okay. The average person that I have does quarterly service. And that's a good mixture, I think, because that makes a good cost effective measure mm -hmm. where it's not super expensive in the long over the period course of a year but at the same time gives you excellent control most of the time perfect okay. awesome and so what has been the worst pest incident that you've had well i'm I've, sure everybody's been wondering the same I, i've seen quite a few things i I've, I've been in a house that the roaches were so bad that the floor was moving when i walked in <laughs> The, the, it was like Indiana Jones. I mean, it was. I, I've seen, I've seen ticks so bad in a room that the wa that the walls were moving. Yes, was, the, the late poor lady it was an older lady. She had ticks in her bed, and I, the ticks were just crawling up the walls. It was just horrifying. I've seen uh, spider eggs hatch in a room. I've seen a lot of things. So, yeah. I, I would say the word, you know. The most disgusting things I've seen is probably roaches because. Wait, is there is there any like one experience that stands out like I regret taking this job? Well, I don't I don't know if I would say I regretted it, but it was definitely not cost effective because <laughs> um, you know you deal with all types of people, mm -hmm. okay? And part of the job of this is to educate the consumer. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they don't know, okay? So. You go in and you say, this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. We need to clear out our cabinets. We need to keep our trash taken out, things like that. And they don't understand that. They don't understand why it doesn't go away when you spray. Right. Education is part of this job. Okay. Um, educate, I don't even like that word. I like to inform is better. Inform. Inform the customer because they need your help. When, when, you, go, when you have a plumbing problem, you call a plumber and you, you listen to what he has to say. Sure. You, you don't flush diapers down the toilet. Okay, when you call the pest control guy, he's going to tell you things like, hey, "These things are conducive to pest infiltration, uh, infestation." Mm -hmm. um, and roaches are very much a an issue that's complicated by dirtiness or 
things that aren't kept clean. Uh, small little things make a big difference to bugs, okay? But I, I, like I said, I've been in places where I had to kick the door open because the roaches were raining off the ceiling. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, I've seen, I've carried roaches in my pockets because they fell off the ceiling. <laughs> There's not much I haven't seen. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, so if you don't mind sharing, John, how many accounts do you have for your business? I have about 135. Nice. That's um, awesome. And we've built it all on referrals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a small company, you don't have the marketing dollars to have the TV advertisements, the radio spots that the bigger companies do. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're talking, you know, do one ad on TV, you're talking $10,000 or more. Mm -hmm. um, a radio spot can be twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred four or four thousand dollars. It's a lot of money mm -hmm. for a thirty second thing on, on the radio. Um, that kind of money can be much better used making your customer happy, and then you, the customer, wants to share you with their friends. Right. And the best part about a referral is when you share it with your friend. Your reputation goes with it. So your mom or your friend or your neighbor or whatever that you've referred already has the guarantee that they, they already know you mm -hmm. and they know that you would refer to somebody that they could trust. Then I come along and I tell them, they say, well, so-and-so referred you to me. And I go and, and it's so easy to sell it then because then I've already got your reputation going with me. Right. Okay. Um, and then once that happens, it becomes a domino effect. Um, and so I only ask people to share me with one person. Well, share me with one friend, one neighbor, one doctor, one veterinarian, whatever and then let the, them share me again. I've got one customer gave me six referrals. Wow, that's awesome. Six referrals and then their referrals are calling me with referrals. So when you start getting those kind of, when you get the positive re feedback that you're getting and you get referrals from the feedback mm -hmm. or they go to the Facebook page and they see high reviews, then they want to do business with somebody like that. Okay? 100%. And referrals are everything. They, um, yeah, referrals really can are. be your best friend or they can be your worst enemy. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Uh, so the, um, God, I had one question, one other question for you. Oh, I, I think I know what the answer to this is going to be, but what sets you apart from other companies? Well, that's a good question. I think what sets us apart is my striving to be a good customer service representative. And that's what I thought you were going to say. I, that's what I, what you know, I love about you. Th this, this job is so much more than just killing bugs. Yep. Um, the, to me, what service is, is somebody that shows up on time. Mm -hmm. They make an appointment and they actually show up for it. Mm -hmm. um, there is nothing that makes me matter than just have an appointment set with a vendor, of, of any vendor. Mm -hmm. And they say, I'm going to be there 8 to 10. And they call me at 12 to say they're running late. Oh my God, I hate that. Yep. Okay, I, I understand that life intrudes and things go wrong and tires go flat and things like that, I understand. However, if I'm gonna be late, on the rare occasions that I'm running behind, I'm on the phone. I'm running behind, there's a wreck on the bridge, I'm on my way, but I don't just show up late and say, oh well, I did the best I could. That doesn't work for me. Um, if anything, I'm early. I think, I think that shows respect. Yep. Respect is showing up on time, doing the job right the first time. That's the job, yeah. okay? And I, I've been asked this many times, and people will look at you and say, I couldn't imagine doing that job. And I said, well, my job isn't killing your bugs. And they said, well, what do you mean? You're the, you're the bug guy. <laughs> I said, no, my job is to establish and maintain customers. That's my job. Mm -hmm. the, the rest of it is easy. If all I had to do is kill your bugs, it'd be easy. The job is establishing the trust with the customer, Establishing that the rapport that you know, no matter what my problem is, I can I can call John and he'll answer the phone. Yeah. You don't call my you don't call my number and get a confusing menu of messages. You get me. Okay. I pick up the phone or I'll, or I'll call you right back if I'm if I'm busy. You text me on the weekends. I'm answering you. Mm -hmm. I don't just let you go for the weekend. Um, that's not how I do it. So I try to set myself apart that way, in being personal. And then once I saw, once I do your service, I'm checking back with you in a, in a couple of weeks. Hey, how's it going? Are you, are you doing okay? Because I know you're busy. Right. I know that people are busy. They don't, they don't have time for me all the time. 
So I'm checking back and making sure you're doing okay. And because that's important to me. And I can personally attest. So I, my wife and I, we use John for our pest control and I can personally attest to his punctuality, his honesty. Uh, he is everything that he claims to be and we wouldn't go with any other pest control person, even if it was less expensive, right? So thank, thank you yeah, thank you, John, for, for keeping our house bug free. Uh, so uh, the, the last bit, I just wanna give the floor to you to let our listeners and our viewers know where to find you, how to find you, and I'll, I'll just let you get, have the floor for a minute. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, we can put notes in the show notes, right? Yes, I'm going to link Deadbug Walking's Facebook page. Okay. And uh, I'll pu also put the website in the show notes as well. Perfect. So you'll be able to find him in the show notes, but just in case uh, you're listening and not viewing, where can they find you? You can find us on Facebook under Deadbug Walking LLC. You can find us on the internet. Uh, our, our webpage is um, deadbugwalking.com. Pretty one word. Um, and, you can, and the webpage we created, um, we actually have a really funny section in there that, we, that I came up with. I dreamt this, so we, we made it. It says pest control folklore. I saw that, I started reading that, I and, thought it was funny. We, we created that for a reason because a lot of people are under the misconceptions of a lot of things that we're told. Mm -hmm. um, well, you have a secret formula that I'm not allowed to know. No, <laughs> I, I don't have a secret formula. You can go by it okay? yourself, like you said. And I, I think something that, needs, that really needs to be addressed is that Pest control companies, whether you're big or small, are all under the same rules. We all have the same licensing. We all have the same insurance requirements. We all have the same classes we have to take. Mm -hmm. None of that is different from company to company. The only difference is, is what they're charging you. Okay, I'm using the same chemicals they use. I'm using the same processes they use. I'm using the, doing the same licensing, same insurance. Everything's the same. The only difference is, is I can charge you less because I have less overhead. Okay. And your customer service. And customer service. Because it, the bigger your company gets, in my opinion, the less the customer matters as far as, uh, besides the revenue, mm -hmm. the less they matter. Because they just become numbers. Yeah. Okay. I know every one of my customer's names. I know their dog's name. I know their children's name because I make it my business to know it. Because it's important. Yeah. When... Um, I've had customers where their pet passed away, and I send them a card and, I, and my condolences. I have a baby, I send them a baby card, because it's important, it, we're family. Yeah. I feel like we're part of the family. Um, I want to be part of your family. That's you know, awesome. in, in the sense that we're, we're a unit together, okay? And I think it's important to understand that. Um, this business is service related. It, it's not killing bugs, okay? Killing bugs is the result of your job. This is not the job, okay? And I think that a lot of times people just screw to get that backwards. They're all about getting the job done at any expense. Mm -hmm. And then that'll, that, that'll figure it out itself. Well, to me, that's not the way. I mean, every company is going to lose customers. You're going to lose somebody to people lose their jobs or people move or people pass away. There's going to be attrition in your, in your business. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't care how good you are. But if you're losing 10 or 20% of your business a year, you're going to fail over time. If I lose 10 or 20%, it's over. Okay. So every customer loss to me is devastation. I, I really mourn the fact when I lose a customer. I want to keep them happy or try to keep them happy. Sure. And that's the goal. Okay. So I, I think that this business can go a long way if you just treat people better. When I, when I make a schedule, and I know that I've got these services to do. Mm -hmm. I give myself enough time so I'm not speeding to your house. I'm not rushing through the service. If anything, you, if anything I'm keeping you too long because you've got things to do. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you and we're playing with the dog and, and it becomes just an event to go to mm -hmm. as opposed to I've got to be out of here in 20 minutes because I've got another stop to go. Um, I try to give myself enough time to do that because I think that's important. I think being on time is hugely important. I think it shows respect, and I think it shows how good you are to really are. Um, and I don't think you know, I would do it any other way. I wouldn't trade this job for anything. I love what I do, um, and I love making people challenges and making people happy. Um, if I can do that, I've got it made. 
That's awesome. Killing bugs is, is just my, my game. It's just what it is. I love it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't take another job if you offered it to me. I've been doing it for so long that it's just, I love, I love doing it. I love challenges like this. So That's fantastic. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on. It was so great to have you on here. One more thought. Yes. For the people that are watching, um, I wanted to offer a special discount. Okay. If you, if you see us and you call us, the numbers will be in the show notes, my phone numbers and my, you can text us through the website. You can text me or call me. Tell me that you saw us on the broadcast and I'll give you 10% off any service package you choose. Um, free estimate. I'll come out for free and look at it, see what you got, and we'll go from there. Um, so I'll give you anybody 10% off any new service that you have, any new customer, just, just for watching. Perfect. Thank you so much, John. Um, 10% off, guys. Uh, you have to call in. Again, call in. Say that you saw it on YouTube. You saw the video or you listened to it on the podcast. If they listen to it on the podcast, say, I heard it there too, uh, and knock 10% off. Uh, again, thank you so much, John. I know you're going to be successful, and you know you're already you already are successful in my book. And um, again, this is the Blue Collar Success Podcast, the top podcast dedicated to local business and industry. My name again is Jacob Lewis, and you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please like, share, and subscribe. The links are in the description below. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Thank you so much. That's awesome.